Good morning and welcome to this time of worship. My name is Susan Maddox. I'm the pastor here at St. Paul United Methodist Church in Saluda, South Carolina. And I'm glad that you have joined us this morning in this time of worship. Will you pray with me, please? Our good and gracious God, we thank you for the privilege of coming before you in worship this morning. We know, God, that even though we are not together physically, we are united through your spirit and your love. I pray this morning for each and every person who is participating in this worship service from their home, from their car, from whatever location they may be, Lord, that you would bless them, that you would refresh and renew their spirit, and God, that they may be uplifted and you may be glorified through our time that we spend together before you today. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen.
As we come now to our time of prayer, I would invite you to just quiet yourself for a moment and to think about some of the names of people that you have seen this week or that you have heard about this week who are in need of prayer or who are perhaps celebrating something special in their lives. In the course of just seven days, there are babies born, there are anniversaries and birthdays celebrated. There are also losses, family members who have passed, sickness that has come into a household, financial struggles, so many different things that we each have dealt with in this week past. So I'd like to ask you to take a moment of quiet and just silently lift up some of those names and situations. And then I will pray with us and then ask you to join me in the Lord's Prayer. Let us take a moment of silent prayer. Our good and gracious God, we are grateful that you ask us to bring before you all that is in our hearts and in our minds. We are grateful, God, that when we share joyous celebrations with you, they seem to be that much brighter because we know, God, that it is from you that all light in life comes. Lord, we also share with you the deepest pains and concerns in our hearts, and we know, God, that you are the one who wants to hear those and who will walk with us through each of those difficult situations. We pray today, Lord, for those who are struggling with sickness, with grief, with financial loss, with just fear, Lord, of what tomorrow might bring. We pray, God, for those who are struggling with loneliness and isolation in this unusual time that we find ourselves. We pray, God, for those who are at risk every day as they go out the door to work to provide essential services for all the communities in which they live. Lord God, we thank you that you hear our prayers and that you promise to be with us no matter what. And now, God, from each of the places that we are gathered today, I ask that you would hear this prayer that we join together to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now as we prepare to hear our special music today, I would like to remind you that this is normally the time in our worship service that we receive our tithes and offerings. Here at St. Paul, many of you have been bringing by or mailing in your tithes and offerings each week, and we appreciate your faithfulness. It has enabled us to continue ministries at the church here and through the church that we would not be able to uh, maintain and contribute to without your finances. And so we appreciate your faithfulness in giving. We also have great news in that we have finally set up our electronic giving, which makes it much easier for you to make your offerings and your tithes. I want to briefly tell you what options you have so that you will know that moving forward. We have a text to give option, and if possible, we'll try to put that number across the bottom of the screen, but the number is 833 915 2555. Again, 833 915 2555. That is a number that you would text into your phone, just like you were going to give a message. And then it will give you a space to put in an amount of money that you want to donate. And then when you hit send, you will receive a message back the first time that gives you a link where you can enter your financial information. And then in subsequent 
giving opportunities, you will simply just put the amount in that you want to send and it will magically end up here at the church a couple of days later. We also have two other options for electronic giving. One is a mobile app on your phone. That's one that I personally prefer to use and it is called Give Plus. Give Plus. So whatever app store you normally go to, you can find that um, get that application and download it to your phone and it will walk you through setting up contributions. You have a drop down list in that option and so you can give to things like the Family Life Center Fund, the uh, Epworth Children's Home, different uh, backpack ministry, different uh, options that we have here at the church and those will be in a drop down menu. We also have a third option and that is through our website www.stpaulsaluda.com and that is all lowercase and all one word www.stpaulsaluda.com and there will be a uh, donate button on there and you can follow that link and it will also give you a drop down menu with options of places that you can give and support whether it's the regular budget or some of the special designated funds that we have here. So I thank you for your faithfulness in giving in whatever form you use. And I trust that together as we continue to be faithful in our tithes and offerings, that our church will be, get, be able to make an impact both here in this community and around the world through the different ministries that we support. Thank you for your faithfulness in giving. Blessed be your name. Our text today comes from the lectionary texts that are offered for Ascension Day. Ascension Day was actually this past Thursday. It is the 40th day after Easter Sunday. And according to the scriptures, Jesus rose from the dead on Easter Sunday. He was here on earth for 40 days. He appeared to his disciples and to many other witnesses. And on the 40th day, he ascended into heaven. In the Apostles' Creed, we say that he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father. 
Ascension Day may seem to be a part of the story of Jesus and maybe not so much a part of your story or my story, but the text that we'll be reading today out of Ephesians really shows us that, that this part of Jesus' story is a part of our story. This is a text that starts, it is actually a prayer, a blessing from the writer to the churches of Asia Minor, especially the church in Ephesus. But this text that we're reading, this blessing, this prayer, starts small, and then it, it grows and grows in size. I want you to listen for that and hear at the end how it comes back around to us, the church, even today. The reading is from Ephesians 1, verses 15 to 23. Since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, this is the reason that I don't stop giving thanks to God for you when I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, will give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation that makes God known to you. I pray that the eyes of your heart will have enough light to see what is the hope of God's call. What is the richness of God's glorious inheritance among believers? And what is the overwhelming greatness of God's power that is working among us believers? This power is conferred by or given by the energy of God's powerful strength. God's power was at work in Christ when God raised him from the dead and set him at God's right side in the heavens, far above every ruler and authority and power and angelic power, any power that might be named, not only now, but in the future. God put everything under Christ's feet and made him head of everything in the church, which is his body. His body, the church, is the fullness of Christ, fullness of Christ who fills everything in every way. May God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and understanding of this text as we consider it for a few minutes this morning. While we wait, as I have had conversations with people over the last several weeks, I hear things like, I am so tired of just waiting around. I want everything to get back to normal. I can't wait until the hair salon opens. I can't wait until the restaurants and the stores open. I can't wait until we have sporting events to attend and to watch on television. I can't wait until we can actually have a meeting face to face instead of all this Zoom stuff. I can't wait until we can have weddings and funerals and family reunions again. I can't wait until all these travel restrictions are lifted and it's safe to go places again, to fly in an airplane. I can't wait. I'm tired of waiting. I can't wait until we can come back into the church building and worship together. I can't wait until we can have youth group or Sunday school or Bible study. I can't wait until I can go visit my family members at the nursing home or the hospital and actually hold their hand and be with them. I'm tired of waiting. This indeed is a difficult time that we are in. We are in a time of waiting and we're not quite sure what things are going to look like if and when we come out of this season of waiting. We are in new and uncertain times. It's difficult for our lives to change in so many ways. And we're not quite sure if or when they're ever going to get back to the way that they were. Well, today I want to just ask you to think about a couple of things. First of all, I want you to think about the fact that this global pandemic that we are in, this COVID-19 virus that has affected the whole planet, is bringing about changes that are likely to be permanent in the same way that 9-11 brought about changes around the globe. We have never been able to move about and travel post 
the way that we did before 9-11. We're not quite sure what a post-COVID-19 world might look like, but I feel very confident in saying that it will not look like what our world looked like before COVID-19. There will be changes. So I would like to propose today for us to consider, rather than trying to get back to normal, waiting to get back to normal, that we wait and consider getting back to better, back to better. A better use, perhaps, of our time. Many of the activities that we have filled ourselves with, our lives with, our time with for so many years, all of a sudden are not available to us anymore. And we find that our time is different. Perhaps when we are finished with this period of waiting, when we move into a post-COVID-19 existence, maybe we can find a better way to use our time. Or perhaps some of our resources. It's been interesting that a lot of people have realized things they were spending money on now that they don't have the opportunity to spend money in those areas anymore, such as eating out at a restaurant, going to entertainment venues, um, sporting events, and so forth. Perhaps if we could aim for going back to better, we might find that we could put some of our resources in different places. And in so doing, we perhaps can take so much of the focus off of ourselves and consider others as we use our time and our resources. Perhaps when we come out of this time of waiting, we could choose to live a life in a way that reflects more of Jesus Christ and less of ourselves. In the text today, the text takes us from considering the way that God's power is at work in the world, that God's power is at work in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and that God's power continues as he has received Jesus into his place of authority, a place at God's right hand, and put everything, everything, every power and authority under Christ's feet, including the church, and then has made the statement at the end of the text that Christ is the head, the lead, if you will, of the church, and that the church is the fullness of Christ in the world. The words say, The church, Christ's body, is the fullness of Christ who fills everything in every way. So in this period of waiting, instead of waiting to get back to normal and then rushing to have everything back to the way that it used to be, I would like you to just take a little time this week to consider what it might look like to move into better how might your life be different if you took the words that we have heard today in this text and began to think about how you could fill your life, your places, your contacts, your family with the fullness of Christ? How you could begin in each area of your life to live and act and choose the way that Jesus did when he was here among us. In so doing, we are not guided just by our own imagination, but we have the opportunity with Christ as our head, as our lead, to ask for that guidance, to ask how that we could be guided in different steps, in new directions, in creative thinking of ways that we could indeed begin to be the fullness of Christ in this world. Imagine if every person who calls themselves Christian, who claims to be a member of a church, began to 
be that fullness as they move through their daily lives, through their, with their families, with their business, with their jobs, uh, with the contacts that they have, even if they're not face to face, with their use of social media, consider how it might be if each and every person who claims to be Christian and who claims to be a member of the church of Jesus Christ began to act and live in ways that show the fullness of Christ here on earth. Christ ascended and sits in the place of authority, but that's not just his story, that's our story, because he comes back with that authority and empowers us to be his presence now in the world. In this season while we wait, in this week while you wait, take a little time to prayerfully consider new possibilities, a better way of living, a way in which you can indeed be and show the fullness of Christ in this world. If you are a person who is not yet sure about this whole Christianity thing, you may just be tuning in today out of curiosity. I would like to say to you that the power that we read about today in this text is a power of great love, of great purpose, of great passion that is meant to make your life full and this world right. To take all those broken parts of this world and begin to put them back together. To make a world that is whole, that is reflective of who God is and of the creation that God originally made. That is available to anyone who would ask Jesus to come into their heart in a very simple way and say, Lord, I want you to be the one that leads my life. Forgive me of my sins and help me to live as your follower, to live and to do as you would in this earth. We are called to be the fullness of Christ in the world. And on this Sunday, in which we celebrate the ascension, we celebrate the fact that Jesus has ascended and we're here to do the job now. Let us take that and embrace that call and that responsibility fully. May God bless you as you seek to live out that this week. Amen and amen.